what's up people, Dobsy Wolves is right here and welcome to Game Gems. Another episode, another look through my treasures. Now, last episode we went ahead and went through the Game Boy. An amazing piece of technology for the handhelds that l lifted its life all the way through to the Game Boy, to the GameCube era. However, there was a company who was trying to fight Nintendo to try and be the top dog in all gaming. As you guys know, it was the Game Wars, so of course, Sega had to step in and fight them as well. And that's when the Sega Game Gear risen. Now, the Game Gear, as you guys know, was something completely different to the Game Boy. Of course, it was a handheld console, but it was the, one of the very first handheld consoles that was in colour. Yes, the Game Boy was in awful shades of green. But the game, but the Sega Game Gear was full on colour, which was unheard of by a lot, a lot of people because everybody saw handhelds being under budget, under budget, cheap handheld stuff that is a lot, lot worse than the than, than the NES, the SNES, and the Sega Mega Drive and the Sega Master System. But the Game Gear full on did their hardest to try and beat Game Boy, even though Sally did, did not and they sadly died, but there were some amazing games on the Game Gear, and I've got five here with you, with me right now to talk about them. Like I said, if I don't have the box, I'll put a picture on what it looks like as a, of the cover of the game, but also I'll show you clips of the actual gameplay itself, if I can find it. So I've got five right here, let's get through them, shall we? The first one, as you guys know, I've kept them in special cases, the first one, is actually the first one of its kind for the franchise and that is Prince of Persia absolutely amazing now I know the very first Prince of Persia game came out on the PC or the whatever it was the Commodore 64 whatever you want to call it but the Game Gear made it better for the original game it was freaking phenomenal people now I know what people may be thinking Go, Prince of Persia was pretty much the beginning of, of Assassin's Creed. 100% correct. He had the same bits. He had a good bit of um, um, speed running, free jumping, jumping from platform to platform, jumping down, jumping up, climbing walls, everything like that. But also had a good bit of combat to it. But the very first Prince of Persia game was not like any of the others. If you die, you die. You have to start the whole thing again. With the new ones, of course, you die, you just respawn from the last checkpoint. But this one was super difficult because if you screwed up, you have to go back straight to the beginning and do it again. And you will get frustrated. And that's what I liked about it though, because it was trial and error. And not a lot of games are like that anymore, which is, which I do, do appreciate what they do back in the day. So, Prince of Persia is definitely a gem in my eyes for what it is and for what it, what it has been throughout the years. And I'm really grateful that Prince of Persia has improved through the years. Of course, they have had their bad days in games, but I'll tell you truthfully, though, people, I am looking forward to playing the remaster of the PS2 game in the near future, because this game freaking rocks. Next up, we're moving on to Disney. Now, I could have easily said that this was a better version on the Sega Mega Drive, but on the handheld though, was surprisingly very, very well done. And that is Walt Disney's Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. This game has been rehashed, remade, been put into different platforms for many, many years. I'm serious people, many years. I'm talking about stuff on the Xbox 360, the Nintendo Wii, the Sega Mega Drive, the PlayStation, it's everywhere. But the Game Gear, there's something about it on the Game Gear was actually really, really fun and entertaining and actually quite challenging. And I like a bit of a challenge when it comes to platform games or side scrollers, which is pretty much what this one is. Now, as you guys know, the new ones are not really side scrollers, they're mainly platform games and they're all in 3D. But when you want a side scroller when it comes to platform as well and having a bit of a challenge and it's Mickey Mouse. This is the this is the one you want. This is the gem you want for this type of game. Cast Evolution on the Game Gear is super good. It's smooth as well. Like I said, some handheld game consoles can be quite clunky. 
This one is super smooth, and I've beaten this game quite a lot in my time. And I'm still, and I'm still planning on trying to play it again to see if it's still hard to this very day. So yeah, Mickey Mouse. I know it's a short one to talk about because there's not a lot to really talk about. It's pretty much a side scroller with a bit of platforming. It's just an entertaining Disney game made by Walt Disney and the company itself. And Mickey Mouse is awesome, and Castle Illusion is just an amazing game all year round. Definitely a gem in my eyes for the Game Gear. Definitely on my list. <laughs> Excuse me. Next up. Batman! Yes, I know another Batman game. But this time, I think one of the best Batman games on the handheld. Now, like you guys know, AVGN has slated every single Batman game on the handheld. Saying that they're all shit and they're all sucky. I disagree with the Game Gear one, Batman Returns. I really like it. Don't ask me why I like it, I just really do. It's just, it's something about it. I think it's probably because of childhood memories, everything that's what I like about it. Now a lot of people are saying you should not like it because of your childhood. But that's what it is, that's the life for you, that's, that's the thing about it. To be honest, I don't really fully remember how the gameplay was like, but all I remember really is that it was almost like a beat em up game, just like the SNES version. But, of course, with lower graphics. And that's all what it really is. I remember it was a beat em up game, fully, as I recall. Now, I am planning to play this again in my free time. I've actually got my actual game gear charging up right now, so I can play it later on to see what it's like. I'd say to you the only thing I do remember it being was quite difficult when you're facing Catwoman. That's all I really remember. I never won against Catwoman. Really wish I could beat her again. Or try and beat her. It's definitely a game I've never beaten, to be honest. But to tell you the truth though, I'm looking forward to playing it again. Hopefully the memory is still there. And hopefully I've not regretted it and put it down as one of my gems. And I now think it sucks. But I highly doubt it because I still love this game. <laughs> Next up, quite a hard one to come by, very hard to come by, and not a lot of people ever talk about it. It is Beavis and Unbutted. A lot of people are thinking, why the hell is this a game? I ask the same question as Barbo. For some reason, it's enjoyable, it's the same comedy as the average show. If I remember in the game, the voice actors of Beavis and Butthead are actually in this game. And there is a lot of cameos in this game that are from the series, there's a lot of comedy in it, there's pretty much all the same stuff that was in the show, like, I am Hoya! And of course, the voice actor in this game is actually really spot on for what it was. Of course, as a game game game, that does have an amazing voice. Yeah. Recognition in the game, but for what it is, I really do enjoy it. Um, it's a very unique game to be honest. It's not like a platform game, it is a side scroll in Jazz and Stone. But what it mostly is, it's pretty much your playing an actual show. You're playing the actual TV show as the game. Now, a lot of people are thinking that's just shit crap, that's all why on earth you pick this as a gem. Mainly for a gem is because I've never seen it anywhere. This is the only copy I've seen. I've watched it on the website, I've seen CS, they've never had a copy yet. There is some on eBay, but they're going for quite a bit of prices. Sometimes they're never even in the box of the shop at all. But this one literally has everything inside it, including the fucking tray. So yeah, it's um, definitely a gem in my eyes. And to be honest, I think this is probably the only Beavis and Butter game that ever ever got made, so it is one of a kind. If there is another one out there, please let me know yeah. if you guys know uh, what the other Beavis and Butter games were on what platforms. I want to know because so I want to try and check them out myself. Sure. But um, yeah, this is my number two spot for Game Gems or the Game Gear, Beavis and Butter. Don't ask me why, I just like it. But now. A big one for the Sega Game Gear. It's amazing. I love the game a lot. 
a banging soundtrack. Seriously, a banging soundtrack. I actually own it on vinyl. It is not the best version. Don't get me wrong, it's not the best version. But it does compete well from the original. Streets of Rage. Yes, a lot of people are thinking, oh my god, he's picked Streets of Rage as his number one spot, but it's the worst version ever. It's not as good as the Sega one. Yeah, true. Graphics-wise, it's not as good, but the controls are just exactly the same as the Mega Drive version. Exactly the same. There's nothing wrong with it. Seriously, if you care about graphics, you're not going to like it. You prefer the original, you prefer the Mega Drive one. But the controls are fluent, they are spot on, they never lie, they never, they're never broken. I've beaten this game quite a lot in my lifetime and it's still such a fantastic game and it has a bitching soundtrack, it seriously does. If you don't believe me, definitely give it a go, whether it's this version or the Mega Drive version. Now with this one though, if I recall, this has a different little bit of a story than the original one on the game on the um, Mega Drive. This one you play with players two ex cops. That's weird because if I remember in the game on the Mega Drive one, you play as three characters. This one you play as only two. So of course you may be thinking, how on earth can you play two players in this game? Pretty much, as you guys know, the Game Gear had themselves the same cable as the as the Game Boy, so you can play two players, three players, or four. And it actually works. I don't have a second Game Gear, but I had a friend who actually had another Game Gear, and we've actually played it before, and it actually works very well. Now, a lot of people say that two-player games on handhelds don't work as well. This one really does. Because I've tried it with other multiplayer games on the handhelds, like Contra, Operation C. Don't work as well, but this one works dramatically well for some reason. I don't know how they do it, but it's just really spot on. And like I said, if you guys can find this copy out in the wild, definitely give it a go. Or if you can't, get yourself an emulator of it. It is freaking phenomenal. So that's pretty much my choice on the Game Gear. Now sadly, as you guys know, the Game Gear didn't really win the fight against the Game Boy because the Game Boy moved ahead,wards and made moved forwards with the Game Boy Color, the Game Boy Advance, and the Game Boy Advance SP, and sadly for the Game Gear, bit the dust, same thing as the Atari Lynx, which of course, as you guys know, the Atari Lynx freaking sucked ass. That's why I don't own it. <laughs> if I don't, if I never liked it, I won't own it. And plus the games are super pricey, and the actual console is super pricey. But yeah, they're my choice for the Game Gear. Streets of Rage, Beavis and Butthead, lol. Batman Returns, Castle of Illusion, and Prince of Persia. If you guys do have yourself a Game Gear and you have your own personal gems, make sure you leave it in the comments down below. I love to know what your game game gems are going to be for your Game Gear, for your Sega Game Gear. If you don't have one, fair enough, I understand. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel. One about 87% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, but you still watch my videos. So what the hell are you doing? Subscribe! And with that being said, the people have still got to you guys subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time for another episode of Game Gems. Cheerio!